Well, there is a, a brand of what's called anarchism in the United States, and to an extent in England, yeah. which is a very sharp departure yeah. from the whole libertarian tradition. It's called anarcho-capitalism. That's what's called libertarian here. Uh, if you take a look at it, it's advocacy of the most extreme form of autocracy and oppression that has ever existed. Uh, what it support, the policies, whatever the proponents may believe, the policies very quickly turn into concentration of power in the hands of unaccountable private institutions, the worst kind of autocracy, uh, po political states are at least partially accountable, private concentrations of power aren't. Uh, the idea that you have uh, f voluntary agreements, uh, that goes back to a famous comment of Anatole France that under conditions of perfect freedom, uh, both the poor man and the rich man have equal rights to sleep under the bridge. Yeah, that's what voluntary agreement is if you're, uh, if you have no means of support yeah. and somebody who has all the power is willing to give you a couple of pennies, you can make a voluntary agreement saying, okay, I won't starve, I'll be your slave. Yeah, voluntary agreement. Yeah. And in fact, some of the more honest advocates of this position, like James Buchanan, uh, Nobel Prize laureate, uh, argued at one point that every human being's highest aspiration is to ensure that everyone else in the world is his slave. That's the kind of people we are. That's our nature. We want to make sure that everyone is enslaved to us. And these policies basically are, are based on that conception of human nature. Another yeah. well-known advocate, Murray Rothbard, is strongly opposed to laws that require children to f parents to feed their children. But why should parents be forced by the state to feed their children? Uh, that's the con and, and if you accept their conception of liberty, that's true. Why should you be? Uh, it's, it's radically different from the libertarian tradition. And it's pretty striking to see how different it is. Yeah. So if you go back to, uh, back to say, Adam Smith, yeah. who's supposed to be uh, you know, advocate of classical liberalism, yeah. take a look at his actual views. Yeah. Uh, everyone's heard the phrase, invisible hand. Uh, very few people have bothered to look at how Adam Smith used the phrase. Actually, he used it twice, once in Wealth of Nations, once in his, his companion book, Moral Sentiments. In Moral Sentiments, here's the way he uses it. He says, suppose, it's an agricultural society he's talking about. He says, suppose some landowner accumulated almost all the land and everybody else had to depend on him for survival. He says, well, this wouldn't really matter very much because, because of the natural sympathy of the landowner for other people, which is kind of the core of human nature, he would make sure that the goods of the, his possessions are distributed fairly equally. So it would end up with a fairly egalitarian society as if by an invisible hand. That's Adam Smith, not what you learned in school. Actually, the other place he uses it in Wealth of Nations, if you take a look, it's pretty much an argument against what's nowadays called uh, neoliberal globalization. Uh, what he says is, uh, he says, suppose that in England, which is what he's concerned with, the uh, manufacturers and uh, merchants uh, sold their goods abroad, manufactured abroad, and imported from abroad. Uh, they'd make money, but the people of England will, would suffer. However, he says, probably not going to happen because they're going to have enough concern for their own society that they'll be willing to sacrifice profit for the general good. So as if by an invisible hand, we'll be saved from the ravages of what's now called globalization. That's Adam Smith. It's based on a different conception of human nature. It assumes that the basic enlightenment conception that 
the core of human nature is sympathy, concern for others, mutual support, and so on. Not hate everyone else, get as much as you can for yourself, make everyone else your slave, and we'll call that freedom.